I think it's fair to say that I've done a lot of random stuff on this channel, but I prefer pencils and inks, or doing digital work, or even some sculptures here and there. But today we will be drawing with charcoal. Yeah, I'm serious. We're doing it. Roll that intro. Alright guys, so I'm actually going to go over all the different tools that you need to make this drawing, which is a little different than what I normally do. We're also going to talk about tips and tricks with charcoal and what I recommend to do, then we're going to jump into charcoal drawing. Now I've only been drawing charcoal for about 10 weeks, so hopefully this comes out pretty good. I'm hoping, but I'm specifically following instructions found in page 208 through 212 of Exploring Life Drawing. This is a phenomenal resource. If you are taking art seriously, I heavily recommend picking up this book. Even though I'm more of a pencil and ink kind of guy, I really like this. This is really good reference for drawing and really going out of your comfort zone and it has really impacted the way I draw. And I feel like my drawings have come out stronger because of this resource. So I heavily recommend this one. You're also gonna need a rag. Charcoal's messy, guys. I've had to clean this desk so many times doing homework for this class, it's ridiculous. You're also gonna need charcoal. Now I have this little bag holding compressed and vinyl charcoal. Blenders, not needed, but it doesn't hurt to have it. A white eraser, I actually have mono plastic erasers. They're really, really good erasers. You're also gonna need a neat eraser. Now I have two, I have a normal one, and then one that's just pitch black from charcoal. This is a really good blender, so I would recommend two. Final fixative, which I have never used before. This is to preserve the charcoal drawing so they stay intact because charcoal really likes to fade over time. And lastly, something to draw on. Now this is the most important one. I personally am going to be using a 18 by 24 drawing paper. The weight can be up to you. This is just paper I like, and I prefer to work in both 11 by 14 and 18 by 24. 18 by 24 lets me do more detailed work, but 11 by 14, which is what most of the drawings I've done in this channel have been on, there it's just big enough to get the work I need, but not too small. And I can usually bang them out within an hour or three, like the artwork. So I like using those skills. Any skills up to you, but I have to use these for my assignment. Plus, do not, and I repeat, do not use newsprint and do not use sketchbooks. Sketchbooks can tear easily and newsprint often comes in a brown. If it's a gray paper, that's fine because you can use white charcoal to bring out more highlights. But brown, you can't really do that with. At least, that's what I was told not to use. And again, newsprint's really cheap, so it can tear easily. So those are my recommendations. Now again, I've only been drawing with charcoal for about 10 weeks, but we'll see what I can do. So here's something we haven't seen in quite a while on the channel. This is my Batman sketchbook. I used to draw on this a lot, but now I just use it to test different art supplies and different like different items. Like I still have the master marker stuff in here. And then I also have my drawing I submitted to Teching 101. Before I could draw good. Seriously, this thing sucked. I don't know why he liked it. Here's the charcoal we have. I am going to be using vinyl charcoal, which I actually used up all of it for the drawing. So I don't have anything now. Yeah, I'm breaking the illusion of film, but I do have compressed general charcoal. I have white compressed art station charcoal and then black compressed art station charcoal. And the thing about charcoal is that it really, it's really heavy and you can't really remove it. So when you draw with it, it's pretty much on the page as is. You're not you're not going to be getting it off. Even like the vinyl charcoal, which we're going to put a clip of that in real quick so you can see that I did use it and that how it operates. It is easier to erase, but it's still, there's still a little bit of marks with it. So do be careful when you place your charcoal. So do your pencil lines, do your markers with the vinyl charcoal. But as you can see, this stuff really goes down and it's quite interesting. It's really kind of cool. Uh, this one, which is the art station one, it's a little cheaper, but it actually goes down pretty heavily without that much pressure. While this one, you do have to apply more pressure to get it to go down. So just keep that in mind. The white one obviously is white and you could use it as a blender. I personally don't recommend using that because I use a special knead eraser for it. But here's what a normal knead eraser does. It's gonna smear it as you can see and it's gonna erase good chunks of it too. Especially when you start pulling and cleaning it because knee erasers get cleaned as you pull them. Now they're still there, the mark is still there, but it's gonna be smudged and then it's also going to be, as you can see, lightened. Here's what I do recommend because I've been drawing with charcoal for about 10 weeks for this class. I actually have a knee eraser that I've been using since day one. So this is what a knee eraser looks like after two weeks of use. This is what a normal 
unopened, clean, never been used new eraser looks like. So clean, two weeks of use with charcoal. This is 10 weeks. As you can see, on in real life, it's actually like pitch black. On camera, it's a little grayer. But yeah, you can see the tonal difference. This I like to use as my blender to really blend my two tones together and to smooth out the, what I do. So for example, let's draw, let's draw a woman. So we're gonna do our anatomy lines, give her some sassy hips, put her arms down, do a circle for the head. Gonna give her, let's give her some back. You know, give her that hourglass figure. I know I'm gonna get hate in the comments. It's 2019, women don't have to be hourglass. I know, I know, I know. Don't worry, I know. Still what I wanna draw. This is just a really crude, crude drawing, but you know, what if? Really, really make it crude. And we're gonna go in, and let's fill in this whole thing. Let's make it a black, like, shadow silhouette. So now, we'll take this to add a few more tones. It's kinda cool. You could do cross hatching techniques too. So if you are one who cross hatches, you can do that. It still works. But I'm gonna take my blender now, and you see how I have all these open areas, and it's not laid very smoothly? Well, I'm gonna go in, and as you could see, I'm smoothing it out. And that's what I like to use this for, is to smooth it out. It's gonna lighten it up, but it's a neat eraser. That's kind of what it does. My dog's at my door, so we're just gonna ignore that. And then the normal neat eraser, so I'll show you what that does now you send that. It's gonna smear it more, but you can see it's picking it up. It's lightening the tones a lot. And this is a technique I do recommend using. Now, in case you're wondering where I got these cool little containers, these were from Marvel Slime. I have a Spider-Man, I have a Hulk, and I have an Iron Man. They also made a Cap one, but I never picked it up. They used to hold slime. I actually ended up using these for knee erasers. If you don't have these or can't find these, you can go to Dollar Tree and get something about the same size. It's a metal container for about a dollar. You get two for a dollar, and then they have smaller ones which are four for a dollar. So you can get those, because knee erasers don't come with any container, just come in a wrapper, which stinks. You want a container to keep them clean and keep them from drying. You can also use a eraser, by the way, before I forget. You can see that's really lightening the tones up. Like, look at that. Real quick, I did not use these at all when I made this, but just to show how they work, you can use it to actually like pull these weird like strands out. And you can kind of spread it a little bit like that. So you can like do some kind of funky stuff with it. And of course the rag to clean up because charcoal gets everywhere. As you can see, it's already on my desk again, so I'm gonna have to clean up my desk. And to clean the desk, water or just a kneaded eraser, that will do it well. And the last thing you guys are gonna need is this. It's called Final Fixative. This is if you guys want to protect and preserve your drawings because charcoal, if you breathe long, it's gone. It's just gone. So this is to protect your drawing. I've never used it before. There's no instructions. It just says it's flammable, so I'll have to be careful. But that's all you need. I'm gonna be drawing a picture of my dad wearing my Batman hoodie because my dad's my hero and Batman's my favorite hero. So I thought it'd be cool to draw my dad. So let's do that and roll the B footage.
Hey guys, I apologize for the camera angle and the lack of audio quality. I am going to be using this thing called Final Fixative, which I talked about earlier in the video, and I'm going to be spraying this on my actual drawing to keep it, you know, nice and stable and sturdy. I've never used this before, so I didn't want to wear any of my equipment. I actually have it all pushed back a little bit, so I apologize for the drop in audio. But let's do this. You got to give it a good shake. I have never used this stuff before, ever in my life. Here's hoping I uh, know what I'm doing. Guess we just spray it on. It was at this moment he knew. He f***ed up. Okay, mistakes were made. I, I, I messed up. Oh. <clears throat> uh, so I guess we just let this dry. Let's, uh, let's do that. Oof. Ooh, that smells. Yeah, do this in a well-ventilated area. I'm gonna open this window behind me. All right, guys, I just finished filming everything. I'm really tired, it's super late at night, and I actually am really happy with the piece I did. Now, I still am gonna be sticking with my pencils and my inks, but I might branch out and do more charcoal drawings because I really like how this piece came out. I know it doesn't look exactly like my dad at all, but I had fun and hopefully I get any on this project. Also, my dog seemed to like the drawing, and she's never wrong. He's just a cute, tiny little puppy named Kissy. Ain't that right? I'll pretend she said yes. So, with that said, let me know what you guys think of the art project. Subscribe for more art-based content, and let me know if my dog's adorable or not. The answer is yes, she is adorable, because she's so cute. And you guys have a wonderful night. I'm tired, and I'm going to bed. Peace.